Hello everyone. Welcome to Spring Boot tutorial series by JR Academy. My name is Jairaj and uh, thanks for joining again. So this is tutorial 9, understanding application.properties file. And uh, in this tutorial, we will discuss the application.properties file in detail. But uh, in previous tutorials, we have seen so many fundamental topics and uh, those topics were very important. So if you didn't watch my previous tutorial, I recommend go back and watch them first. And uh, so this tutorial is going to be very short because it is not possible to cover each and every properties. But I just wanted to introduce this file because we're going to use this a lot. So this project we have created in our previous tutorial for our uh, employee management system. And uh, if you remember, we have uh, used this resource folder in our application startup tutorial. And uh, we have discussed about index.html file and banner.txt file. So this is basically inside the class path. So at the time of uh, scanning the project, uh, Spring Boot will already know about this file and whatever we, we specify inside this file, uh, Spring Boot will behave like that. So, and we also have discussed a few things about the default behavior of Spring Boot. So if you don't specify any behavior, then Spring Boot will behave default. Other, and if you specify something, then uh, Spring Boot automatically will take that behavior. So. If you go inside this, we have this application.properties file and this file is basically key value pair. So there are two kinds of property normally. Uh, one is uh, the default common application property and uh, those are the old, uh, those properties are already there and uh, if you specify then Spring Boot will know what to do with it. Second one is a custom property we can specify and we can uh, write our code such a way that it will behave according to this property. So for demo purpose, let me show you something. So this is our application. Let me start and uh, this is showing this uh, spring banner, right? And in our previous tutorial, we have changed this uh, banner. So let's say I don't want this uh, banner at all. So for that, let me write spring. And if you see here, Eclipse is helping me to searching this property. It is giving me the suggestion. So let me write this uh, main dot banner and I am banner mode is off. So I'm turning off this mode. Let me save this stop the application and if I start again you can see we don't have banner here anymore so this is just a one property but uh, but there are there is a thousands of another properties we can uh, go through it so you can go to uh, your browser and uh, search for common application uh, common application properties spring boot and you, if you see here we have one link from them so this link will take you to the common application properties page and if you see here you have long list of properties and each and every property have a specified description here and the values so uh, let's say this is the login properties and uh, from uh, spring boot 2.0 we have logging in in built with spring boot and if you want to configure that you have this all options and uh, if you go down below you we have the banner related property you can set the size you can set the character set height and uh, location and so many things and uh, if you go like more down you have so many other properties we have spring profile which is very important when we are using profile based application so, so uh, imagine uh, in at the time of development we normally have multiple environments so one environment is for developers developer use that environment to develop it right and another one is a pro production environment will be there or testing environment will be there. So every environment have their own uh, different properties, different database and stuff. So you can use this profile uh, properties to specify which profile you want to use. Same way, if you go down, we have another uh, so many important properties such as this one. So data, if you see here a data property and you can go here and you have spring data cassandra and then we have spring data mongo here we have spring data jpa also here so this property is related with database connectivity we will uh, see this pro these properties in detail in upcoming video in, in upcoming tutorials but just keep in mind that uh, this file is very important and uh, you can visit this page and uh, see each and every properties read about them and uh, in upcoming tutorials uh, we will use this one by one and we will try to cover as much as possible and you can make a list as uh, I already uh, told you to create uh, notes on this and uh, that list will uh, will help you a lot. So now let's see our uh, 
custom properties so let's say we need some uh, data and uh, some important information or we have third party uh, urls that we are using so normally uh, if you remember in our first tutorial we have discussed that sometimes our application needs to communicate with third party system so let's say you are building an application for some company and that company have its own employee management system or uh, normally they said a directory of the employee right and uh, let's say uh, that application should be the int for the in internal use so normally in big uh, companies they have supply chain or they have different uh, applications inside they normally the employees use inside uh, it is not for the other uh, the people which is not related with that company so in that, that kind of application they need to validate the user right so normally the user validation should happen at the outside of the application so in that condition they have to call the other service which validate the user that this is a value user and we should able to uh, move further in this uh, particular application so in that condition we have different urls or different uh, configuration in that case we have different urls and properties we need to use so let's say we need some uh, parameter and give that parameter something like grid and let me pass a message such as hello so uh, if i want to take this uh, if i want to print this uh, in my application then let me go here and uh, open my command runner and uh, so when i start this application this function gonna run and i want to print here that property so i want to use that uh, property here so let me write something like this and give name but we don't have this uh, um, variable assigned inside this class. So let, what, not, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to specify that which is private string and grid. And this grid uh, will come from the properties file. So I can do something like this. This is the value annotation uh, from the spring. And I can use this. And for that, this is a dollar sign, then this and so if I specify any variable like this, Spring will know that this grid will come from this property file. So let me stop this and run this again. So if you see this, it is printing hello. And uh, same way, let's say we have any third party APIs that we are using. So we can say something like uh, this. We have XYZ dot form and we have other uh, string, right? So same way you can you can save rest apis you can save other urls here you can save so many other properties and uh, this way we can uh, use this our custom property or we can uh, sometimes design our application such a way it will behave uh, depends on this so normally uh, as i mentioned in in at the time of development we have multiple environments and uh, at that time if you want to change this uh, application properties based on uh, environment then you can specify here uh, you can you can use uh, other uh, properties files such as application hyphen dev dot property for development environment or like this so normally what people do is they copy and paste this here and here they rename this like this and they use like this so this uh, this proper so at the time of so when we deploy our application on the development environment the environment will use this develop application file because let's say you have properties file not here somewhere else then you can change the path of the properties file and uh, you can change the even name of the properties file you not necessarily you need to use this file this name but you can use another one this is simple text file but just make sure don't uh, you don't put the space or something here otherwise it will take as a string because it's a key and value pair and uh, uh, you can use a YAML file instead of uh, properties file. It is another uh, kind of file that you can use as an alternative of this properties file. And that file is a little bit different, but most of the time it is same. Same way we can store uh, or we can get list or array from properties file. So let's say for list, we can do for something like this, comma separated values. And uh, we can take it here. Let me copy this. And here say and uh, let me print this so here I can do something like this and here let me print this so 
if I run this I can see something like this see, so this way I can take array if I if I declare this as a list it will take it as a list if I declare it as a set then it will take only uh, it won't take duplicate values basically so imagine this that uh, if we have multiple URLs or a list of uh, instruction to do then we can use a uh, we can use this property files like this so that's all for now in this tutorial but i before ending this tutorial i, I recommend you guys to go to that uh, link and uh, read about that common application properties i will put a link in the description that will help you to know more about uh, that application because in upcoming tutorials we're going to use some of them but uh, as i mentioned it is not possible to cover each and every properties because it's a huge list so that's all for now in this tutorial See you in next one. Till then, like, subscribe and keep learning. Thank you very much.